Welcome back, sports fans. Welcome aboard to a live GNK stream from 401 Games in the heart of Toronto. Thank you to VWTV Live, our friends deciding to cast some top-notch Toronto X-Wing action. We have a GNK coming to Sunday, but it's not exactly a very casual event. It's definitely got, I would say, probably a few of the best players in the province uh, here today joining us for... Uh, some competitive practice, a lot of uh, guns for hire lists out here, a lot of guys trying to get some reps in before the, uh, the Rochester Regionals. I think a few of them are planning on yep. taking a uh, raiding party across the border next week. We are your hosts on Timbo Slice. Otherwise known as Canadian Tim. Sure. <laughs> and I'm Throwdown Horse. Also known as Dave Grohl. I, I'm not. I'm not. This is terrible. <laughs> All right. So, what we have here is Phil Gales versus Mike Reverso. We've got Phil Gales flying with Super Swarm. We have no less than four bandit squadrons, which are absolutely naked. Uh, we've got a standard gold squad stress hog. And Jess Pava with uh, nothing but adaptability on her and an integrated astromech. The R2-D6 isn't going to come in as handy as you might think of it. I mean, R2-D6 is a really special one-point droid. It just says basically... As long as your PS is four or higher, sorry, three or higher, you gain an EPT slot. And in this case, Jess has taken the adaptability. I laughed at this, of course, the other day because you've got eight points of upgrades on the one ship, and then between the other five ships, you have one point of upgrade. <laughs> so uh, Philip just being furious with his point efficiencies on his ships here. Uh, but I love that the adaptability takes Jess down to a two, which now means that Philip gets to decide in which order his entire list moves, and most importantly, in which order his entire list shoots. So instead of Jess having to shoot first, he can do the stress bot, double stress thing, all of his bandits can shoot, strip all those tokens away, and then Jess takes a fully modded, because she's going to have rerolls for days with that kind of loadout on him, right? Yeah, with those guys next to her. Okay, and Phil has his Flying Aces model, so there's something on the top of that stick that we can't quite see. Looks that like, uh, that looks like the stress ball. bot. That's the stress bot. All right, and then over on the other side, we have Triple Star Viper Beauty. Look at this. We've got Dale and Oberos with Predator Auto Thrusters and the Mark II Star Viper title. We've got Guri with the Predator Star Vipers uh, Mark II title and Auto Thrusters. Auto Thrusters on, on all of them, of course. And then finally, Thweak with Glitter Stim on uh, Fire Control System because you cannot take Predator having no EPT slot and Auto Thrusters and the Mark Three title, Mark II title, pardon me. Uh, and Phil just showed us which way adaptability went, and I missed it. Uh, Phil almost always takes uh, Jess down. Two a two. We'll see. Yeah. The only the only the only situation I could maybe think that he would consider taking Jess up to a four might be for Wookies, just for arc dodging at PS3 there. But for the most part he wants uh, Jess down at PS2 so he can decide who moves when. Now something happened with Tweak at the beginning, I didn't quite catch it, but I think the only thing that makes any sense at all is that so he took the Jess ability. Yeah, I mean in this matchup. I mean, we, we have a, a long, like, and by long, I mean about four, three weeks now, but, you know, we've had a debate going in many of the competitive uh, Toronto circuits about most people think that the best thing to do with Thweek is just copy the pilot skill all day long. But as a Thweek player, you have to be ready for this kind of situation. You have to decide what matchups will exist where you have to decide, you know what, I'm not going to take that high pilot skill. I'm going to take the pilot ability. And, you know, here's a perfect example. Yeah, I'll definitely take uh, Jess's ability because I'm going to now get defensive re-rolls as long as I stay close to my other two Star Vipers. It's awesome. In effect, Thweek has been given Predator uh, so long as he stays near his other guys. Yeah, and the best thing here, I mean, the Predator is going to get uh, maximum efficiency because, of course, Phillips' list is all pilot skill two, so he's actually getting two re-rolls, not just one with those Predators. It's basically like they have Dengar crew there, Aaron. Here come the bandits. So Phil describes his opening uh, with these guys as a snowplow. So we'll see what he means by that. I wonder if he's actually going to do what I think he's going to do. I think he's probably going to... Oh, I see what he said. Yeah, he does a, a one bank with this guy and a three... Oh, once forward, then he'll three turn the other ones and get a nice little snowplow going. 
My guess is he's going to try and take his whole list through the two debris uh, cloud tokens, the one in the middle and the Y in the bottom left-hand corner here. Yeah, with that large span. Unless Mike Reverso turns up board and goes through the middle here, he might actually end up... I mean, Mike's not going to just joust a Rebel Swarm. No, he's going to try and do try and do something to split him up. But, uh, and those Starbiker dials are pretty damn good, at least in comparison to a bunch of Z95 and Y-Wing dials. Now, the dial on Dalen Oberos is even better, Aaron. You want to walk us through this new uh, Guns for a Higher Star Viper pilot, what he does and what kind of dynamic he adds to this matchup? Honestly, I'm not sure off the top of the head I remember what Dalen does. Now, I believe whenever he programs a bank or a turn, he can decide to turn it into a Talon roll. It's actually even better. Whenever he programs any bank, any turn, or any Segnor loop, so the only thing that he can't do is a forward Talon roll, because you can't do those. Um, but yeah, any maneuver on his dial, if he, he, he obviously becomes a red maneuver, but he, um, yeah, it, it, it becomes a red maneuver, but it gives him the type of unpredictability that often pays off in dividends at PS6, um, um, because, you know, you've now got... Actually, pretty sure Dalen's PS8, isn't he? Oh, and here comes the barrel roll. Ah. Uh, Christian has a phrase to describe these kind of barrel rolls, but I don't think I should use it on stream. <laughs> um, let's, let's edit it and say that he calls them barrel rolls of trickery. Barrel rolls of trickery, fair enough. Uh, and I mean, that's awesome. I mean, look at that opening. He just, oh, he is PS6. My mistake. Just made the, uh, it's beautiful. And it looks like uh, Mike is going to try to force to come through the tight part of the asteroid now. See, if, you're, if you've got Dalen Oberos in your list and he's got the um, the Virago title as well and you give him fire control system, I love putting either a VI or more even better would be stay on target on Dalen Oberos because then you've got the ability to change. Like you probably going to have a two straight and then you change it to two bank or two turn and then that turns into your Talon roll. Because you, you have double stress from that? Well, no, because it just says that you treat it as a, a talon roll, which is already a red maneuver. You can't get right. it's no such thing as a double red maneuver, right? So you're you're doing a red maneuver either way. At least get yourself the option to do, or like the one bank, for example, you can do. Um, no navigator gets you up to speed. So stay on target's the same bearing, just a different speed, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that card got eroded. Uses me on account of there being an errated version. Well, Mike didn't really like the fact that uh, the the clarification to pattern analyzer in the last FAQ that now means that you can't green maneuver through a debris cloud and, and not take any stress from it. Yeah. I completely understand why that's the case, though. Having had a look at the tie silencer dial, oh my God, if you do, if you're able to go through debris clouds like advanced sensors at PS9 or 11 barrel roll green maneuver through um, a debris cloud it's pretty uh, it's pretty hectic that is some rhymes with duckery <laughs> all right so we have the Z95 stress hog doing one forward and taking their sweet time and we're going to see what snow plow means so he's doing hard turns on the other guys. Our stream table is slightly behind the uh, the ball in terms of uh, time. They uh, there were these two guys outside um, smoking, holding up the whole tournament. Apparently, they, apparently they were like not they weren't even playing. They were just like you know doing this thing on the internet where they just use their voices instead of actually play X Wing. Jerks. <laughs> You gotta get in close to the microphone, oh, sorry, buddy. I don't care if I smell bad. You gotta get in close so they can hear your voice in there. Okay, right. so the important caveat that we've missed, of course, for Dalen Oberos' pilot ability is the fact that you must not be stressed. So when you are not stressed, you may reveal a turn bank or Segner's loop maneuver. You may instead treat it as a talon roll maneuver of the same direction, left or right, using the template of the original revealed maneuver. So, I mean, Mike has gone for maximum mods on all of these guys, which is great. I mean, I definitely don't mind even um, 
Atani Mind Link, Guri and Dalen, because that's great, because Guri can just get that free token and trigger everybody. But Mike's already got his list down to 96 points. I don't really think that he needs the extra um, bid here or putting like an advanced proton torpedo on Guri or something like that for, for Max Lulls. These but. guys are nice and lean. Good builds. Fairly lean machines. You know, just extra. The, uh, the toughest thing here, I think, is that Mike has to find a way to approach this swarm from a vector that doesn't completely trap him. What a lot of people don't realize, with especially with a seasoned rebel swarm pilot like, like Philip, no. yeah. uh, that you're going to get into a situation where he's sacrificing not having a shot for one or two turns with one of those Z95s just to cram it in there and get uh, a block. Now, these Star Vipers are extremely hard to block especially with those wonky barrel rolls that they have. I mean, a one-turn... Like, a, Let's take Guri, for example. Guri is in a position where she can essentially just not move from the position she's at and just rotate 90 degrees. She does a one straight and then wonky barrel roll back left as far as possible. Or even worse, she does the one turn left and then the bank uh, barrel roll one forward and she's essentially right next to where Dalen is right now. It gives the Star Vipers, to my mind, Aaron, and you can help me out here because I mean, you know a lot about the extended uh, Star Wars universe lore and all that. I think that the, the Mark II title gives thematically maneuverability to the Star Vipers, which is much more in keeping with what they actually do in the lore because the, the Star Viper is a vessel that is just, it's in the fray where all the dogfighting is happening, but it doesn't have these like long accentuated um, vectored like maneuvers. It's a very like topsy-turvy Tasmanian devil kind of spinning around like a top maneuverability to it. It's just like spinning on place and shooting in lots of different directions. Um, yeah, I'm not actually familiar with the lore on these guys, but gosh, does that barrel roll help you more. I mean, yeah, it's incredible. You can bank three away from somebody you're jousting and then do a barrel roll to come out basically uh, from their side coming at them. It's, it's nuts. Uh, and the other thing too about Guri is Guri, Guri gets blocked. It's not the worst thing in the world. Someone's at range one and isn't shooting her. Yay. And she gets a focus token. Winning. And gets to shoot with her predator on some other ships. So that is Guri's pilot ability for everybody who doesn't know is at the start of the combat phase if you have at least one ship at, at range one you get a free focus token makes Guri one of the most uh, effective focus battery ships in the game now with the current uh, errata to Atani Mindlink. Now that Guri is in a position where she can uh, only be linked to one other target for the ability for her to use that barrel roll or boost to get into range one and still power up Atani is incredibly powerful. Um, I don't think he's refusing. I think he's setting up a favorable approach vector, which I love. Um, I mean, for for him to have split up his ships and go through the two different debris tokens at the, at the hole, I think is very risky. Um, he's got Jess at the very back of this formation, and Mike just wants Jess. I think Mike wants Jess so badly in this matchup. He's going to move Thweek first, because Thweek, of course, is PS4. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and this is going to work out so well for him. I'd love to take a minute just to talk about Thweek. Thweek was actually on my list of talking points for the whole day, uh, Aaron. Why sure, we, go for it. He, he, it's a new piece. came out in the Guns for Hire uh, pack. And we'll go through the pilot ability, and we'll talk about how he fits into the meta. So sure. um, Thweek's pilot ability says, at the beginning of the game, uh, during turn zero. So, folks, let's, just, let's go over a couple things here first. Turn zero consists of... The initiative roll, incredibly important when you've got Thweek in your list, followed by placing rocks, and then the moment of truth. So, during the setup, before the place forces step, you may choose one enemy ship and assign the shadowed or mimic condition card to it. Okay? The shadowed condition card says, Thweek is treated as having the, the pilot skill value you had after setup. So, to clarify for some of the newer players, because this came up in a league match the other day, if you shadow a, somebody with a pilot skill higher than four, 
you place Thweek at the PS that you have shadowed. The language on shadow says treat it's having the pilot skill that you had after setup is there to mitigate the effect of adaptability so that if you were to shadow somebody with adaptability then they then would not go up by one pilot skill after you shadowed them it's just to clarify the language on what pilot skill you become not the timing window when your pilot skill is applied yeah it's a very important point it's good that you raise it too because it is designed, as you say, such as to make any shenanigans with adaptability uh, impossible. Now, that's interesting. Mike attempted a barrel roll with Dalen and was not able to do it. So usually when you barrel roll, if you place the, te- if you place the barrel roll template with a one straight and you fit at any point along that one, you must perform the barrel roll. The catch with these Mark II barrel rolls is that before you place the template down, you have to nominate in which direction the bank is curved. So you then can't put the one bank forward and say, well, the one bank backwards fits, you have to take it. It doesn't work like that. No, it does not. It's very, very beneficial for the um, the Mark II pilot because he can put the, the template down in a direction he here's, knows doesn't fit. Here's Dalen. Uh, he's taking a shot through debris on number five, Z95, I believe, and acquiring a target. No, that was Thweek with his FCS. It must have been Thweek. Spending a focus token. Oh. Philip rolling all the evades. And one going through. One damage on his Looks like a shield through on number five. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Victor and Travis just absolutely professionally labeling all of our ships. We know exactly who's whom yeah, and what the damage the count is. Quite well, you know, Devin often says that VWTV Live puts some of the best content, um, tabletop content, up on the internet. And we've gotten some great feedback from a lot of people who watch our videos from other countries. Uh, we've got some today. Uh, Bernardo Jimenez, again, thank you very much for the compliment. We, uh, Thanks, dude. We love commentating, and we love, uh, we love this game just as much as you guys do. But more importantly, we love talking about um, the way that things happen in the meta. So we've gone over the way that Thweet goes down. The, okay, you, um, before we get back Yeah, to we'll, what, we'll do it in the planning phase. It's fine. What, what do you think uh, Phil should do here? Now, he's already got his dials down, so he's just waiting on Mike. Um, does he turn in at this point, and what maneuvers with which ships do you think? I think that Phil's um, options are not as limited as Mike hopes they are. I really think that if Jess, number five and number six, uh, K-turn here, that he will suck um, uh, Thweek and Dalen through those debris clouds right where he wants. Because obviously one, three, and four are either going to do two turns or three turns mm-hmm. so that the following turn they're either going through the middle or coming up uh, board to the left of the middle uh, debris cloud. Um, the difficulty will be in where Mike's Star Vipers end up after this turn. If he reads Phil's mail properly here and tries and either blows past him or just one turns both of them and tries to come this way, yeah. I mean, that might be a way, but I really think that Phillip's opening here has been pretty masterful. I think what Phil should do is take the stress, the stress hog wing and K train a lot. Um, and then do hard twos with the rest of his ships with the, the Jess wing. Um, he won't, probably won't have a shot with the Jess wing this round, but that will draw the Star Vipers in, as you say. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe the K train for the Jess wing makes sense as well. It's a tough call either way. I was really interested. Okay, so. Philip opting to turn his, his whole uh, stress hog wing in there. Because then the following turn, his hard twos or host threes put him. If, if, he, if Mike continues across the top of the board, uh, Philip is going to get to double stress one of those Star Vipers. And that's probably one of the biggest weaknesses of a Star Viper. Their dial, all of their maneuvers uh, that are green are very slow. One forward, one bank, two forward. Um, so they don't like getting stressed, and they like getting double stressed even less. They like that about as much as a sandpaper dildo air. Yeah. Do they have a three straight that's green? They do not, I believe. Let me find. I am wrong. They do have a green three. Apologies. So the other condition card that uh, that Thweek has is called the Mimic one, which is the one that has been applied to just Pava. It says, Thweek is treated as having your pilot ability. One of the really important distinctions that I want to talk about here really quickly with Thweek is this condition. So you basically have to imagine like Thweek begins a game without a pilot skill. His pilot skill on his card reads four, but until one of these conditions is applied, he essentially doesn't have a pilot skill. Talon roll. 
Talon roll from Jess. If he K turns the other one, I'm calling it that I called it. You know you that, totally right? You totally called it. You totally called it. Yep, he's doing them. I don't quite know how to put this, Aaron, but I've, I've flown against Philip and his Rebel Swarm jank before, and he uh, he's very methodical about the way it. I mean, you might look at this as saying, oh, I'm just feeding ships to him without any tokens. He's going to take his lumps this turn, and he's going to get to close the net on one of those Star Vipers next turn. He's got two guys next to Jess, so she's got full rerolls for defense. The last thing that I wanted to say about Thweek is this. Two things. First... Week's pilot ability to assign the condition cards is a may. So, if during the setup phase a single ship goes down on the board before Thweek is placed, mm -hmm. it is your opponent's option to deny you Thweek's pilot ability, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a dick move. But it is it is in the rules, and everybody needs to be aware as the rules is written. Uh, and the other uh, the other very important caveat is that you cannot tweak a tweak, which is why um, pilot ability, sorry, pilot initiative role, I should say, is so important. It's why Mike has come with 96 points. He wants to take no chances whatsoever. Um, if I take Jess Pava's pilot ability or said, let's, I'm, it'd have to be a scum versus scum. So let's say uh, I'm playing against Billy and, I'm, and then you've got tweak, fen, and a jump master. And your, my tweak takes your fen's ability you then can't take Fen's ability again and have two Fens. It doesn't work like that. You have to imagine, like, um, when you take someone's a pilot ability, you're taking the uh, the pilot ability, the card of the person you've copied, and putting it on top of the three cards. So that was clarified by the judges in uh, Mandalore, Ian Hamp, and the fantastic uh, marshalling staff uh, hired by Cascade Games to execute that event. Uh, I'm really happy that that's the way, especially because we were getting into this debate. Alan had a Palobe in his list, and he wanted to make sure that somebody couldn't take Palob's ability and two Palobs running around kind of thing. It was, uh, It's an important distinction. Um, Mike being extremely cautious with Thweek and with uh, Dalen here. Um, I think that's Gurry. That, that was Gurry, yeah. Dalen moves last. Apologies. Really setting up just fantastic approach vectors for his Star Vipers. I think he has to do the barrel roll with Gurry. I think if he doesn't do the barrel roll with Gurry, he's got no options next turn. Exactly. He's going for a lock, but doesn't he have Predator? Oh, he's just using the lock to check range. Right, so he's out of range. Now he knows what the distance is to do the barrel roll of trickery. Very tricksy, Mike. Very tricksy. The rules is written. Oh, yeah. And he just takes a focus. All right, so he'll just deal with that debris next turn. So I actually designed a list like this myself. I haven't been able to try it yet. I was going to do it in one of my vassal matches, but it hasn't worked out for timing in my, uh, my thing like that. My, um, my loadout on Thweek is, is identical. My loadout on Guri actually has intensity instead of predator, because mm -hmm. you've taught me that lone wolf and intensity are two fantastic um, possible EPTs for Guri as well. Yeah, they're both awesome. I think lone wolf in this particular one is rough because Guri really likes being closer to some of the other ships in this one. Yeah. Um, and then my Dalen actually has adrenaline rush. Nice. It's a disposable EPT that says when you reveal a red maneuver. So after Dalen does his shenanigans. You can dis, uh, discard this card to treat it as a white maneuver. So you could like three talent, three bank talent roll, and then boost or something crazy like that. Um, I think that adrenaline rush is equally. You could look at something like cool hand, uh, or even better, like I said, just stay on target. Right? If you're gonna get stressed, at least be able to do all kinds of crazy shenanigans about it. Um, so here, Mike has been forced to use the barrel rolls of trickery to try to keep to reduce the arcs on on his ships. And he's end up having to joust with at least part of Phil's list. Philip just having Mike play straight into his hands. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happened, unfortunately, for Mike. Um, now, I'm not sure if the Stress Hog has Arc. I think that Mike was very careful when he did those barrel rolls, so it looks like he may not, but we'll see in a moment here. So we'll have Dalen, whichever one Dalen is. Dalen is number one, shooting. And he's got his Predator to use for re-rolls. I uh, wonder who the target is. I hope it's Jess. And he's got two crits and a hit. So let's see who the target is. And it is an eyeball and a blank. Not, a, not enough dice there, Philip. And two blanks. So it must be Jess, because it's the only one in range two. So we've got three shields from Jess. That's brutal. It's a really rough start. It is. If Mike can, can knock Jess out, then 
I'll be in a good position. Rolling the correct amount of dice often helps taking less damage, though. It does, but I think Jess is, in fact, at range two of Daily. That's really close. Where is Daily? He's number one. Yeah, he's number one, so that's range two to Jess. All right, then. And now we have Guri. Apologies for my chewing. I mean, some jerky. Really loving it. So we got two hits coming from Guri with four dice for Jess, which is fine. Doesn't even need a re-rolls. Yeah, it was three obstructed on that one from yeah. Guri. And now we'll have Thweak. Range two to Jess, Jess as well. Yeah. Oh, he's got Jess's ability. That's why Mike's in the position he is, because he's trying to leverage the mirror Jess ability on Thweak. It's not a bad call. He gets two re-rolls here. Yeah. The problem with this list having a fire control system is you have to shoot at the same target twice. Yeah. You're fighting a swarm that's not often a capability, right? There we go. Beautiful Three shot. Hits. And we get one of eight naturally, and then Jess's reroll gives him a second. So only one damage. Couldn't ask for much more than that in that in that matchup there, Aaron. I mean, you're going to be taking um, you be taking that damage either way. And Jess is a very enticing target in this match. I mean, she is ironically put these Star Vipers into a position now where Mike, yeah, a Mike's, play I, by Phil. I really feel like Philip has accomplished what he wanted. I think that he may have gotten the Star Vipers may have overextended themselves a little bit too much. I mean, unless Mike bails on this turn with all three of them and just tries to get out of arc and do all their thing, I really think that if he, if he goes too aggressively here, that he's just going to get eaten up. Mm -hmm. Here's a Z95 shot on someone. Oh, Dear. thank God auto for auto thrusters. thrusters. <laughs> wow. All right. And another Z95 shot. Number five doing from the back here. Uh, no mods, two hits. Love Double that. Hits. Superstar. Auto thrusters, auto thrusters for thrusters. safe. And it doesn't matter. And that brings us to Jess, who's going to shoot at uh, Daily. Yeah. And she uh, that's a rough shot from enough. Jess. Getting oh, three rerolls. And she gets one, one crit. crit. That's a rough shot. And he gets the two of eights on one. So no damage. So four damage on Jess. We might actually get to see Dalen Robros' pilot ability on this turn, Aaron. I'm hoping so. I mean, it's a rough spot for him to be in. But he's number one, right? Mm -hmm. So he's actually not in a great position to deploy that without going through that debris. And even then he would turn that way. He yeah. would turn he would turn to his left back to the center of the board. Philip's about to bring the full force of his list to bear here, and we're going to be able to see. I mean, what do people don't look at this and they say, "Oh, look, four to Z95s, Jess." There's a Y wing in there. It can't be that. How bad could it be? This this list, if you get it, if you get it range two from half this list, uh, and your auto thrusters don't work, you're in big bloody trouble. I'll tell you that. So we've got probably two straight coming from number five, one straight from Jess. And then two turns from six, four, and three. Most likely a bank one for that why we would keep everything in our this is Phil's trap. Closing its jaws this round. It's a trap. It's a trap. Okay, so just to finish off lastly on what I wanted to say about Week. Um, you know, in this but in this list, honestly it's a bit of max lols. Yeah. Right. Um, but Thweek has inter introduced um, a really interesting dynamic to um, players who used to fly a lot of Imperial Aces and got a little bit frustrated with the lack of viability of, of arc dodging Aces in the meta recently, I find. Because what the week has essentially done is if you're going to fly him only planning on using the Shadowed condition where you take Pilot Skill, you show up with a good bid and he's a great 30 or 32 point Ace. Yeah, and right? he will always uh, take the higher Pilot Skill on your opponent's list and move after them. There's only a couple of examples in this game where it's a no-brainer to take the pilot ability. Um, if, if you're doing Thweek as part of another list where it's like a Jump Master and Fen or a Saj and uh, a Quad Jumper like I did, um, that's one thing. I mean, there's a couple of pilot abilities that I would always take like no-brainers, which like Inquisitor for one of them. Now I'm, now I'm in HLC. I roll four dice at every range and you get no range bonuses. That is amazing. I'd still be tempted to go higher PS than my opponent, most of my opponent's list. Uh, what about Vader? Like, I get two actions with that wonky barrel roll. Yeah, but you're still at PS4. It depends on what the list is. Right? True. Um, I don't mind Rack's ability either. 
Rack's just going to PS0 you anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. With, with Rack on the table with Kyla. Yeah. You know, something like Han's ability as well. I think it's, it's a great thing about Thweak is that first you have the initiative roll mm -hmm. at the beginning of the turn zero. Then you place the rocks. And during the rocks getting placed, you need to focus on where the rocks go down. But it also gives you an opportunity to think to yourself, okay, I've won the initiative bid or I've lost the initiative bid. Right. What am I going to do with Thweak if I've lost the initiative bid and he gives the initiative to me and my Thweak is moving first uh, at, before an ace? Is it even worth it because that ace is just going to arc dodge me or, or get behind me anyway? I might as well take a pilot ability and try and pull out something unexpected. Nine times out of ten, I, 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 would, I would feel comfortable saying nine times out of ten, you're going to want to go with the pilot ability. Sorry, the pilot skill, I should say, to get up to nine or eight or ten or whatever's on the board. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, ships in the game that are just immune to uh, Thweak taking their pilot ability, like the Shadowcasters, for example, yep. or, or the bomb, the bombers, right? Or they, a bunch of generics we see here. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing that I do think that a lot of people don't really realize is that, you know, with Wave 12 and 13 about to come out, um, Thweak is to Miranda and Nim what Rock is to Scissors. When you get your Thweak behind a bomber, the bombers often think, oh great, the ship's behind me, I can run away. It's not the case. If you can get your, uh, if you can get your Thweak into a position where you go at a Miranda, and then your Miranda moves, and then you get your Thweak behind the Miranda, and you can actually not take damage from a bomb that turn or whatever, you are now in the dream. Because you have a focus token usually, and you've got fire control system, so you're taking range two or range three shots at a Miranda with re-rolls from fire control system, and you can actually just one forward your Star Viper to victory. So you're maintaining that range behind the bomber, far enough away from the bombs, but at the same time, you're providing enough output of damage consistently to chew through the bomber's uh, health and, reg and regen and the best part is you've got auto thrusters and a focus token. So that TLT volleys become extremely less likely to push damage through each turn. So I really think it's important to note that Thweak is a huge element in the bomber meta that has really turned the tables on a lot of Nim and Miranda pilots. But now with the addition of the, the Rebel Bomber, who's to say what's going to happen? But, it, but in Mandalore, I saw plenty of Thweaks take down plenty of Mirandas that's very amazing. handily because you're just one forward to victory, yeah. you know, right behind them. Now they, they've taken a lot of the time on their dials here. We're in the uh, the dial changing cycle. They've all placed their dials and then they pick them up again to reset them. Okay, I'll go. I'll go do that too. You gonna go do the judge call? All right, no problem, mate. I'll keep it going here. Sorry, folks. I got a little bit of jerky going, but sorry about that. Somebody else. Got it. It's okay. Don K going for it. Great thing about having everybody together, like, you know, t 10 of the top 20 players in the province is uh, we all know each other. We all let each other get away with nothing. And anybody can really handle a judge call, usually stuff for that, right? Yeah, most people. I mean, the judge, the answers to the judge calls might not all be the same, but <laughs> you'll, you'll get an answer. Except that, jo except that dodgy guy, Jackie Long, I'll never let him touch my, uh, never let him touch my game. So, yeah. Is it in arc? Is it out of arc? I don't know. Oh, what the, uh, boom. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jackie. We love you, buddy. Yeah. All right, so Philip's taken all the time in the world that he needed to do to get his ship because I really think that this game, or so this turn, I should say, will determine um, if Philip actually gets ahead on points because if he can if he can clear one of these Star Vipers here, it's going to be a great thing. I mean, for uh, Mike's tweak to one forward wonky barrel roll, He'll dodge Jess's arc, but he really won't dodge uh, the stress bot, and he won't dodge the Z95s. Someone's yeah. getting double stressed this turn, Aaron. Absolutely. It doesn't look like there's any hope of people dodging that stress arc. And what Phil's done is he's got one ship and probably two here. Number six will probably do a two-turn. What is a three-turn? <laughs> Coming in front of the other guy. Awesome. Oh, just eyeball it, Philip. Yeah. Uh, no, these guys. These guys want to be official. They're on the stream, right? So they're gonna <laughs> do all the work. It's because this this is like all all the marbles today, right? Yeah. It's such a huge event. 
pro. It is. Uh, <laughs> casual, competitive, casual, competitive kid. Well, you know, it's. I'm glad you brought it up, Aaron. Let's um, let's just pause on that for a moment. So, you know, both you and I are members of the Prototype Toronto League, which is a community that offers a forum for great um, competitive play in terms of uh, competitive list building and a really approachable environment for new players and all that fun stuff. But as members of the league, there are also those of us who also really enjoy playing competitively in tournaments as well as um, theory crafting and really getting some practice reps against uh, some other great pilots. That's how we all keep our, our claws sharp, you know. And things like these competitive GNKs on Sundays across the city, they usually take place at, oh, he's done the two straight. That's heartbreaking. Yep. Week is blocked. I still got a target lock somewhere, and he does have glitter still. He's got the target lock on number five. Yeah, who might be out of his arc. Yep. Ooh, that's rough. Um, anyway, I was saying that this, this is just a really great um, example of how... Um, we as members in Toronto really enjoy a, a really nice competitive Sunday sometimes, right? So it's important to remember that you that you can do that in this in this uh, city. That you can, you know, every now and again, you know the list that you want to play, and you need some practice reps against guys who are really good or or ladies who are really good, you know, and uh, and you want to do that. So here we got Gurry trying to skirt the flank. I love this move from Reverso here. He gets a, might just maybe be able to barrel roll out of the stress hogs. Arc. Honestly, mate, I think he's going to take that boost and he's going to gun after that stress bog. Yep. If he can, if yep. he can dodge yep. number four and number six and still get a shot on the stress bot, he's going to get a free token. That's that's a great move from Mike there. How much experience do you have flying the Star Vipers? Not much. I was playing with Gary a lot last week. The new Star Viper. Yeah. She was fun. Lots and, of fun. And you, roll, you run her with Lone Wolf, right? Yep. Just Lone Wolf. Yep, you're right. There he did it. I don't think he's got an arc on the hog, but the hog doesn't have arc on him, it looks like. So he'll just throw down with that Z95. And of course, it's Guri, so she'll get a free focus token at the start of the combat phase. Most importantly, Guri has set herself up for an absolutely magical one turn yes. right next turn. And now, yet full on behind all of Mike's squad here. That is bad news bears for two of Mike's yep. Star Vipers there. Now, may well very shortly be Guri versus the world. You know, the thing is, though, is that Mike has a huge advantage in this match because of the clock. It takes Philip so much actual physical time to set his sh dials and move his ships. Like, it's taken us, uh, like, ten minutes to get through this one phase. Right, and, right. you know, on Vassal, that happens at a huge clip. But when you're actually on the tabletop and you're having to move ships and mark ships and hand out tokens and plan five dials, the clock can really get away from you. And that's kind of the double-edged sword of playing Thai Swarms or Rebel Swarms. And you, you, For sure. you've played against a fair amount of Swarm players in your day, yeah, I assume. I have, yep. And is that a strategy that you ever employed, implored, I should Absolutely say? Again? I never played the clock. You yeah. never, never played the clock. Okay, Dalen just rolled three big ones with Predator. It looks like he's shooting Jess. Is he shooting Jess? Is he shooting? Yeah. Jess is going to get three re-rolls here. Yeah, I think oh. that was bad. Ooh, like he, might just get lucky. he might keep Jess alive. Oh. He's got to spend it to keep Jess alive. So he takes two damage, and Jess is going to have to pop her ass from after. But he's got no more shots on Jess. Jess stays alive long enough time to do uh, a Ford eye shot back at Dalen. Now here, here's a, a perfect situation where I'm going to lend to a more experienced or more seasoned uh, X-wing player, um, where, Aaron. Yeah, just let's just stop it. So you have Jess, who can shoot at Dalen, but everybody else who can shoot at Thweek. Pr target priority here. Talk to us. Uh, let's start with the Z95 in the back, uh, number three. Z9, okay, and, and your, your target priority would be Thweek, or it would be Dalen? Neither of them are hurt. Uh, I think I'd like to get uh, Dalen off the board. Dalen's uh, unpredicted. Same cost, so... It's just a question of how you think they'll affect the rest of the match. Here comes Guri on number three. Guri's got Predator. Oh, yeah, look at that full Predator re-roll. So she's going to spend the token. Do it, Mike. Spend it. Do it. So this is, spend this it. is Mike, the... do it. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it, Mike. Spend it. Spend it. Oh, he's keeping it. Wearing them. He's going to wear both of those to keep that focus token for offense here. So I, I think that Phil is probably going to need number three shots to finish killing... Uh, Dalen and Fleek, so he would not have spent that on here. 
even if he did. Aaron, my friend, I do have to correct you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Sure. But um, I know that he's going to watch this match afterwards, uh-huh. and Philip hates being called Phil. Does he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's, never told me that he's too polite to tell you. Yeah, he's, so he's a proper Oxford boy, he is. <laughs> or you can call him Pip. Or you can call him Jerk. Whatever you want. You want. I'm sure you respond to both. So you're asking me not to. Okay. So, uh, what's happening now? Okay, so we've got Thweek changing his FCS to the Y Wing. Okay, so he took a shot at the Y Wing. Y Wing dodged it too, which is amazing. So we've got a full mod, well, a full mod being a focus token, but we've got the. Um, we've got Phillips' uh, turn to unload here. I think he's probably. He's got oh, the big fistful, so. Please tell me he's not starting with Jess. No, you, you don't start with Jess, mate. You, you shoot the guys at the back. Well, he's got only one no tokens. That's true. He's got no tokens either. No so. tokens, nothing. So Jess's shot is not. I just, I guess, I like because Jess gets the rerolls. You're, you're got a slightly higher probability of crits. Yes. So I, I would take Absolutely. Jess last. Yeah. Um, that's just me, though. Okay, so he is going to opt to shoot the stress bot first. He's going to stress Dalen and turn off Dalen's pilot ability. Not a bad call. Yep, not a bad call at all. At range two, so no auto thrusters. This is going to be brutal. It is. Brutal. Well, there's a crit in there. It's fine on that first one. Here comes the TLT from the truck. This match now hangs on how good Mike's green dice are this round. Yeah, this is this is clutch green dice time. Oh. Crummy TLT volley one dodges it easily. Another revenge. Double one coming up. Oh. Spending focus token for two. Wearing that. One damage one through damage. on Dalen. That's pretty good. Shields down on Dalen. Salvo from a stress on. Yeah. So now we've got Z95 uh, shots to. Nope. Uh, Jess is going yes. first. Going to take her rerolls. Oh, that's rough. It is. That's so much like my, my match at, uh, at Mandalore. <laughs> Reroll into double bolt. Bo- oh, he's wearing them both. Jess does a shot in the gut before she goes down. So, so now we got has two hull. four Z95s to see if they can finish the job. See, if, I mean, if, if five has arc, that's who definitely who you start with. Six is going first. He's got range one with a focus token. Ooh, three. This may well be the end for Dylan. It is. He's gone. So, you start with number six because now number three can still take a shot at Guri. And I'm not even sure if number five has arc on Thweek. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Yeah, you still got four and three to shoot. Yeah. Of course, you can't hear us, so. Yeah, they're just pointing. They're just making sure. So, Reversal is going to check to see if five has arc. I think that's probably a hard no. No, it's closer than we thought. Love to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to all 56 uh, of you who are tuning in live right now. Hello, folks. Most of our viewership comes uh, after these vote- videos get split up and edited and put on YouTube. But for uh, over 50 of you to take time out of your Sunday and tune into our live stream, I'm sure uh, Victor and Travis really appreciate it. And uh, join us out here in the galaxy. Yeah, and if uh, any of you are actually local in Ontario, uh, but outside of Toronto, um, I encourage you all to. Mosey, oh my goodness, hit double crit. Mosey on over to uh, Star Wars Gaming Ontario and just keep up to date on events in the city. Ooh. So that's a shield lost and a crit going through on Thweek. We're going to see what kind of crit Thweek's wearing here in a minute. I'll go check and see what that was. Uh, it's okay, Vito 3 Live has this sweet thing called a table mic. Oh, yeah. And then the, the crit pops up. <laughs> They updated their uh, their overlay. I want to say about three months ago, and it has, to, in my opinion, best overlay in the world right now. They got the oh, points up front. The only thing that we're missing is an initiative marker, which I know that Victor and uh, and Travis are are keen to try and um, work out a way to get that initiative marker on. I mean, it's easy. You can just write initiative next to the player's name, but uh, you know, from a from a standpoint, that's pretty much all it's missing. Um, sometimes you have a dice tray. Well, we opted to go with no uh, no dice tray today because it's uh, it's not a premier event. Oh. So you know it's a lot of work to get a second hand in there. So we have one hit and it is abandoned. So that's it for the shooting phase. So at the end of the shooting phase, we have Tweak on three hull and Gurry at full. And 
Chess is still on the board, so that was not a good round for Mike. I think Philip has the high ground. He does indeed. To uh, PRC533, chairing in from YouTube, uh, cheers to you as well. Hope you got some blue milk uh, going on your end as well. It's a lovely su Sunday afternoon in the city, so the great thing about playing at 401 Games is everybody here gets to ride the subway, so nobody has to worry about... Uh, Anything like that, because of course the OPP are out in full force for their ride program, so everybody gets to have a few glasses of blue milk and uh, enjoy a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, the subway is awesome. So uh, you're asking Leverin uh, if we find the Nimiranda impressive. We actually haven't seen a whole hell of a lot of them recently. Because we worked so hard to find ways to beat the crap out of that <laughs> list when it first came out, a lot of people aren't brave enough to uh, to uh, play it anymore. Hola, mi amigo from Mexico. We got some Mexicans. Uh, chiming in from us today it's great we love uh international viewers from we got a lot of uh well i mean philip himself is from the uk we got james ling in town he's a uk as well robin uk as well uh lots of folks from the uk who stream in and uh, chime in and actually i know that Devin and yourself i think got approached uh, from the ptl side about um having some communities in foreign markets uh ask us about uh the structure of our league and then mm -hmm. them try and implore something in their local communities, which is really, it's very, uh, very flattering from from uh, our, our standpoint. So thank you guys for your support. Uh, thank you, PRC533. We do have an awesome community here. One half of it is just the size of Toronto. It's a lot of players in Toronto, a really tight population uh, concentration in Southern Ontario as well. We will say hi to James, uh, our poor Seas. Um, and uh, the other thing is the league that we've built to encourage a kind of creative, competitive structure. Yeah, you, you practice the janky nonsense that seems crazy at the PTL mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a, you know, a low-risk, high-fun environment. And then you bring that jank that you created and realize, hey, it's actually got some teeth to it, to a GNK like this on the weekend. And you put it up against those Asajj lists, against those NIM lists, against those you know, uh, Wookiees lists, and see... Uh, what sort of viability it has in a competitive meta. And then just when you think you've got a, a list that's meta competitive, FFG releases two waves at once right before the Star Wars movie comes out, the whole thing gets thrown on his ass. So <laughs> yeah. we're really excited to talk a little bit about as the uh, videos go on today about wave 12 and 13. Um, uh, it's just 12 now. They, uh, they merged it into one? Yeah, okay, so, so wave 12, 12, sure. Yeah. Uh, just about what that's going to do to a lot of the stuff. I mean, like take Nim Miranda, for example. I really don't see Nim Miranda being able to survive the gunboats. For those gunboats to be able to three-turn, three-turn, slam, and get out of dodge if there's bombs nearby, go down the board, come about, and they can shoot when they have a weapons disabled token, and Miranda can't, so she can't even keep up with them. Mm -hmm. um, I think are really going to force a lot of builds. I mean, Asajj is the same thing. She isn't going to like a bullseye firing arc. No, it's a big bullseye firing arcs are really going to be rough on the, the big ships. Yeah, because they're so big, they're hard, easy to hit, and then they move after you. That one's at PSN, so they shoot at you with this thing after stripping all your tokens, and they get to stress you as long as they are a good enough pilot to get you in that arc. Well, only Tyranny can strip your tokens, and you can choose to take a damage rather than have your evades and focuses stripped. And on somebody like Asajj, you might do that, yeah. right? Because a Shadowcaster needs those focus evade combos. One damage, and you get to keep your stuff for shooting and further uh, defense rolls, so yeah, it's probably worth it. But, uh, I mean, what's cool about Tyranny is she'll force that choice on you every single time. 100%. So you want to go kill her. Plus, if you put the Enforcer title on her, she'll be throwing a stress as well, which... <laughs> so Aaron, I know that um, we're, we're really not trying to talk about the PTL as a focus today because it is a GNK, so we've got other leagues from just the Toronto one. Um, you know what, Gilbert, if anybody calls you names, you, you just tell them, look at the scoreboard. Hey, hey, what's the scoreboard? That's what everybody laughs at me about the list I brought out today. It's like the first time I put um, a Boshek Oiken with four Academy pilots on the table. Someone says, what do you do? It's a Boshek Oiken with four Academy pilots. What are you thinking? And then I said, well, let's look at, look at me again in about a minute when the scoreboard is, and then we'll, we'll talk about that, okay? Uh, sorry. He'll just K-turn to Z95 through a debris. What a boss. No Fs given. Sorry. Philip. No, Philip, yes. Uh, so, Aaron, one of the things that I wanted to, um, 
I, I really wanted to ask you, and I know that we're not talking about the PTL as a focus today, but we can talk about it for sure. I really wanted to ask you what, like, how you, like, the story. How did you get it started? Because it was you, Mike Perese, and Graham that are on the 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 insanely massive trophy that we have yep. at at face to face games right now, where our trophy is kept. Um, what, 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 paint the picture for us. Like, were you guys at a coffee shop? And you said we should try this. Or there was a couple of GNKs, and you said, wow, we have enough players to do it. Like, walk us through it. Okay, so, um, man, I'm so interested in this game. I'm having a hard time. Uh, multitasking? Multitasking. And All right. Phil's you... gone for a block. Oh, that's so exciting. Well done, Phil. Um, and he's focusing, and the other guy does a bank one, right? Yeah, he one-forwarded the stress bot into the back of the Z95 that just moved. So the y wing yes. staying put, yeah. which is a brilliant move because Gurry is going to get to um, – to take an, an unconditional shot on the Y-Wing, but the Y-Wing's got plenty of hull, so he's going to get to double stress Thweek and probably end Thweek's day. Uh, here's my guess. Thweek's probably taken three to four shots this turn. Thweek is double stressed, so... And then it's Gurry versus the world. Yeah, and and Gurry can do a lot, but that might be too tall in order for her. I think Thweek wants none of it. I think he's bailing. Yep, he's out of there. Yeah. So he's doing a three bank. He's not clearing stress. And he's got two Z95s without tokens pointed at him, and Jess Papa, who has at least one pal in range one. Um, he was stressed, wasn't he? Oh, no, I get, no, sorry. It was Dalen who died who got double stressed. That's my mistake. Sorry, stream. You don't see, uh, sorry, you don't see Dalen's stress tokens because he's now a cloud of debris yeah. floating through space. He gone. <laughs> he's gone for good. All right, so that, that was a good move. Um, about the best he could do. Um, yeah, I'll tell the story about the founding of the league. Uh, in the next planning phase? Yeah, in the next planning sure. phase. Sure. So it's a two-turn from Gurry, not a one. Interesting choice. I like Great it. So now Gurry is fully out of arc. Stressbot doing nothing to nobody. And I don't know if Thweek has arc where he is. But uh, that is not a happy Stressbot right now. Now, should Gurry barrel roll from here? So in subsequent rounds, she's just directly behind the thing. So she's always behind, or she'd take the focus and try to make the shot count. I mean, that's a full health gold stress off. She's not killing it this round. I don't know if I agree with the double focus token here, because you're right. I mean, the stress bot can just one forward into the Z95 next turn, and now he's blocking both Star Vipers. Well, she gets what she needed. Well, the double focus will spare her if... Uh, uh, we'll give her some defense stuff if... The Y-Wing's wearing all four of those damage. And that's good, but it's still got four more health. The Y-Wing's basically done what he needed to do, which is to herd Mike's list into an approach vector that was very favorable for Philip. For Philip to have all the boardroom that he had and for the Star Vipers to all three of them come through that debris channel there, mm -hmm. I think was a bit of a poor uh, calculation on, on Mike's part here. You should have spread them out, I agree. But I think he got into using the borrowed Jess ability on Thweek, uh, which he might have for one roll here. Now, where's Thweek's target on? Oh, it's on the Y-Wing, so it's not doing him any good. He's going to shoot number three. Number three is unhurt, isn't he? Nope, number three is down to two health, so it's a nice roll here. Uh, just two. Just two. Is he range one of Gurry? He could have a roll. Is he range one of Gurry? Oh, nope, one damage. Taking one. Opting to keep his FCS on the Y Wing for now. And now it is all Philip's fun. Philip looks like he's going to have three shots here. My guess is he's probably going to shoot at Thweek because it will be unobstructed and um, tokenless. So he's got three auto thrusters. Got to save him here. Yeah. Gonna... If, if things go average, he's all right. Number five, roll and hit crit like a boss. No. Auto thrusters wearing the crit. Not a good result there. Crit coming through from Mike onto Thweek, and the crit is. That's really rough. Wow. Sorry, what was it? Oh, no, I'm not telling you. i got to wait for VWTV's live's uh, overlay to come up. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's brutal. That is extremely brutal, especially because Thweek's probably going to get blocked on this turn. Another range three on Thweek. This is number six shooting at uh, Thweek. Right. Nothing from nobody. That's uh, cheerful. Mike. And we got a range three from Jess. Okay. Has he got no other arcs there? And the ship's pointing every which way. No, number three has no arc. Number Nothing four has no arc. And the Y-Wing has no arc. 
Jess going one reroll for two hits. Two hits. This could be the end of the week. Actually, no, it can't. Nope. Autos for two. Autos for two. Okay, so Thweek is alive, and the console fire may or may not kill him. Um, no, will not kill him. That's what it sounds like. He's definitely alive this turn. Travis, if you wouldn't mind just uh, muting the microphone for me for one second, I need to yell uh, the uh, the time left in the round for our players. Here, I'll go do it. Oh, you go tell it? Okay, good. It's okay. Aaron, it's 1938 left of the round, yeah. Because we're uh, we're just having a fun little G and K on the weekend here, folks. Uh, we are fairly short on judge and, and staff and stuff like that. We weren't really expecting um, 18 people to show up uh, this weekend. We usually get it over 10, but 18 actually. We should have done five rounds today, and then you know we were thinking to ourselves, five rounds will put us out of here well after nine o'clock tonight. So not not gonna happen. Thank you, Aaron. If you don't mind just rambling on for a second here, I'm going to pour myself uh, sure. a drink of Fresca. So you asked how the, league, the Prototype Toronto League came to be. Well, uh, back in the day, this was Wave 6, I believe, or so. Right when you hated Dash Rendar with a passion, right? Yeah, 2015, uh, double fat turrets were all the rage, and I went to a tournament. I went to a couple, bunch of tournaments in a row, one particular one, and out of like 13 lists there, six of them were double turrets. And... I said to myself, this is gross. Why do we always play the same game? Well, we need something that's, which is going to force people to vary their lists as they play. Um, and so that was the impulse behind setting up the Prototype Toronto League. So we'd have regular games where you wouldn't have to face double fat turrets over and over again. And you'd get variety back in the game, at least on that sort of semi-casual competitive format. Um, and I think it worked out really well. Well, I would have to agree. <laughs> I met you guys in February of 2016, and it was because uh, Milan and um, his brother had gotten me into playing um, just casually with them, and they were like, hey, this is going to be a fun little G&K on, uh, on a Sunday at uh, Dueling Grounds when it was still in Toronto. You should check it. And sure enough, to your point, I came to the first game, uh, first tournament I ever went to, I brought Lebo and Chewy. You did bring the double fat awesome. turrets. I did. Been doing a lot of. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of classically known as a as a twin big ship player. Yeah, that's your thing. I think that you, gives you a lot of opportunity to load them out with upgrades that can ebb and flow, change with the meta, but still you get used to the chassis, you get used to the maneuverability, and you can you can get that under your. And I think that there's a big misconception with, um, similarly to actually Phillips' list here, about how positioning isn't just an aces game absolutely not you can actually as we see here, we see here like philip has one ship that has repositioning capability and he'll almost never use it yeah. he's always going to take a focus token with jess and try and keep her alive mm -hmm. um and on the rest of his ships are no repositioning it's often the same thing with two ghosts or um lebo chewy or, or whatever check it out. that is now an unstressed stress hunter subsequent rounds you can cater okay. which would not be a bad idea no I think we're probably only going to get two or three more rounds out of this game Given so time, yeah. uh, Philip really has to try and put the, the gas on here he has to lose three Z95s for Mike to get up on points or he loses Jess and a Z95 or he loses the stress bot and a Z95 in any combination of those um now with any Let's hope that Mike has called this uh, this uh, self bump with the Y wing, so he can so he doesn't fall for this. Uh, yeah, I really like a I really like a three sloop left from Gurry at this point. Yeah. Um, I really think that Thweeks up Shit's Creek without a paddle at this point. He's he's stressed, so he's either got to do a one bank uh, or a two forward. I mean, his one bank left isn't a bad idea. He might be able to clear his E ninety five before he gets to shoot. Um, Jess doing a casual two forward, trying to get back in the fight here. Looks like she's going to bump into the back of that Z. It's a rough call. Nope, she's safe. Clean. Nicely flown, though. Oh. oh, no. Mike's disputing it. Okay, we got a bump. Okay. So, with any luck, uh, Fleek, yeah, Fleek can take out Jess here. Would you reach into the pocket of my bag and get me one of those for me, buddy? Thank you. 
Okay, the Z95 number five doing a beautiful little two bank here. Hopscotch in front of number five. Philip just placing his Z95 arcs in every direction, making it impossible for Mike to dodge all of them, uh, which I love. I think that, um, you know, when you put that many arcs on the game at one time, you have to be able to position them in a way that you can't be expecting to shoot them all every turn. Nope. If you are, then you're just, you're, you're poor planning, you know, because they're never all going to be in, a, you've got, you've got higher PS ships that reposition, they're going to out, they're going to dodge some arcs, right? So that's just going to happen. Yeah. So you've got a console fired. Is, is, is Mike going to remember to flip it? Yeah, I mean, there's two crit tokens on Thweek, and Mike's a pretty stand-up guy, so I, I don't think that he's going to forget. And if he does, we'll just remind him, because it is a must. Um, we don't like interfering with the action too much, unless it's, uh, of course, something that, that affects the game state, because there's no marshal here today, so yeah. we're just going to try and be casual about it. Thank you for telling us the story about the PTL, uh, Aaron. I mean, it really has blossomed since, uh, since you guys... Came up with it, and, and the original logo that you had for the league, of course, was Dash surrounded by interceptors and A wings because you guys all hated Dash so much. Sure, yeah, people thought it was a pretty picture of Dash. It wasn't. It was a picture of violence being done to Dash. <laughs> all of the Dash violence. Yes. <laughs> uh, Be beautiful wonky barrel roll there by uh, barrel roll by Thweek. Yeah, that's beautiful. So he's foregone taking the, the flipping the console fire crit. He's got a turn yeah, I mean, Thweek's going to die anyway at this point. He might as well do some damage. Yeah. Um, that barrel roll didn't like dodge. He didn't see it coming. He did the hard one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Guri's probably going to get arc on number five, which he wouldn't be able to kill. Four, which he wouldn't be able to kill and not be able to shoot the Y wing. That's a rough call. That's a great turn for Philip there. Yeah. Um, I, and I gotta tell you, I don't completely agree with the barrel roll from Mike here on Thweek, sadly, because I feel like if he's only actually dodged one arc by that barrel roll, he only actually dodged uh, Jess's, arc. Jess's arc, and no, he dodged the stress bot too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He dodged the stress box arc there, so yeah. So it was a good choice. Yeah. He just he, either way, this is so much fire that it, it may kill him. Yeah, I mean, and also now he's completely limited. He's either one turn left or one turn right next turn, right? So he's not uh, he's not in a great position. I don't know what happened there. So it's okay. We're just gonna get a little bit of uh, ad hoc, putting them back together. So when you when you got uh, when you got eight ships on the board, it's uh, you gotta have a little bit of understanding with uh, with maneuverability. It's not vassal. It's not uh, accurate to the micron. There's been some maneuvers on the vassal, by the way, where I've done the maneuver. And it says, oh, you're on a rock. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they're like, yeah, you, yeah, you kind of are. And then you have to zoom in to, like, the point where the pixels are, like, six wide on your screen. Awesome. And then you're like, oh, yeah, we well, look at that. There is a hair of a micron that's actually on that rock. So we got glitter stim going off on Fleek. Not a bad turn to do it. Nope. The Hail Mary, Hail, Hail Mary turn. Um, well, Fleek has to stay alive here. He's going to take he's kill four shots. He's, he's Thweek is going to take four shots from four Z95s. Only one of them is token. And you're right. Um, after Philip moves all of his ships, he can K-turn that stress bot. Yep. And if Guri's all that's left, that's going to be big trouble for him. Predator, uh, nothing. It was the Jess reroll. The Jess oh, reroll. That's, that's not Jess, just token. That is Jess, but no, he was shooting at one of the Z95s. That must, have been, that must have been Guri shooting. For some reason, uh, the crit card direct hit. Lol. <laughs> Phil has stuff written on it. Uh, this is awesome. Philip? Lol, Philip. All right, so that's one dead. Number five is off the table. Is he the dude with the token? It was. Awesome. So Thweek is deciding who to shoot here. He's got range one obstructed on number six. Looks like he's got range two unobstructed on Yeah, I misreported Jess. that. That was Guri on, on his head. Yeah, that was Guri shooting number five. Yeah, so they're going to see if Fleek can get an unobstructed shot on Jess. Looks like he can. Yeah, closest to closest there. I would say that number six's closest point would be his front left corner. Yeah. That would be obstructed, but Jess is on a different angle. 
but he wants to kill Jess for so many reasons. Dude. The points. The yeah, if he, if he can finish Jess off, he's winning on points, right? There we go. Glitter, Glitter stem for stem three. For the win. Two re-rolls, and she gets two, but she takes one, and she's already spent her astromech, so she's gone. Wow, that was clutch. Glitter stem for the win. Yeah, and so all he's going to do is tank two. All he's going to do is take three Z95 shots and just not two, die. Just two, because one of them got blown up. Didn't number four Well, go? he's four. No, five blew up. Four, three, and six are left. Does four have arc? Uh, I would say that four has arc on oh, Thweek. Yeah, he's yeah. magnetized or something. He's pointed in a funny direction. Did the Thweek roll his console fire? Oops. We're going to go check before this comment. Yeah. Did he roll it? So we're just going to ask our players if they have. Looks like they haven't. And no damage. Perfect. Just wanted to make sure that was the game state before uh, people shot at Thweek there. Hit crit from number four. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Four on Thweek here with auto thrusters and glitter stim is not, not looking good for Philip pushing damage through on these Star Vipers. Number three, number three. Uh, this one's range two. Oh. Just one crit. One day. Glitter stim for oh, two. Glitter stim two, in fact. And this one, does he have cover? Looks like it's through. Well, we'll see from the number of this. Six is shooting range one. He is. Oh, oh that's really brutal. Heartbreaking. Yeah. And All the evades. Thweek is like, what else? So here you go. Thweek is stressed. Can't mm -hmm. do a green to clear it because mm -hmm. he'll hit the he'll hit the uh, the debris cloud. He can't one turn and clear it because it's a white maneuver. Mm -hmm. And he may still hit the cloud. We don't know. Um, but and Thweek has a console fire. Yes. So. And two hull. And two hull. And what's the other crit? I don't know. Thweek has two crits on him. Uh, both of them are face up down here. Yeah, I think it might. Is it stunned pilot? If it's stunned or loose stabilizer, that might be another one. So we're going to find out here in a second, folks. Um, but yeah, it, it, essentially, console fire is the big problem here because Mike's not going to be able to clear that this turn. So Thweek has a. It is loose stabilizer. So he can't clear the stress with a green because he'll hit the cloud. He can't clear the stress. With a white, because it's white, and he'll take a second one. Uh, and he's double stressed. So Mike's in a bit of a trouble here because Thweek is really up Shit's Creek in terms of that console fire causing him damage. Um, this is one of those interesting situations where it's all bad, and you just have to go with the least bad option. For anybody who's seen the, the movie uh, Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World is the lesser of two weevils. <laughs> Dad joke points. How, how does a dinosaur pay for things I don't know. with Tyrannosaurus checks? <laughs> I think it's my favorite dad joke so far. Well, Phillip's a little bit quick on the dials this turn. He realizes he's got seven minutes left, and he is now behind on points. If he can finish the week off, which he should be able to do, then Mike would have to kill the stress bot and a, and a Z to win. So... He's just going for one straight with the Z95. Yeah. Oh, okay. My guess is he will K turn the. Uh, yeah. He, he shouldn't. He, uh, he shouldn't not K turn the the Y wing here. If he can K turn the Y wing, he's got the best chance of actually catching Gurry in a position. I think one straight with the, the Hogs actually the better move in this situation. Why you think Thweek's gonna bail? I think Thweek is gonna overshoot, go through the debris, and with the green three. Clear one stress, get one stress. Well, you called it, bro. Here you go. We're going to see in a second. Four and three still have to move. Ah. Uh, He's close. Phil is not prepared for that eventuality. Now, I believe a one bank does not clear stress for that. Side. Sadly, does not. But it's going to block any forward move coming out of Thweek. Any longer forward move than a one. Doesn't have to roll for another damage on number three, which is damaged. So it would have been a really rough thing to take a crit. Oh, yeah. Number four, doing a two straight, clearing that stress. Going to be the only ship with a token this turn on Phillip's list. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting game end state. I mean, if it weren't for the five minutes remaining, I'm going to go tell them that before they get the shooting phase. Good idea. Thank you, sir. Then Guri might actually be able to mop this up all by herself, regardless of what She is full there. health. But, uh, and a Predator Guri is nothing to shake no. a stick at. So we've got a one bank from Guri who's not going to get around that, uh, that Y-Wing. But... 
the Guri is, oh my god, is that Guri going to get away on the Y-Wing? Oh my goodness, Guri clears the Y-Wing, fantastic. Okay, so where Guri is, she's got maybe one shot from number four, so a barrel roll isn't a terrible idea. She's got Predator, and she's going to get a focus token for being at range one, and she's got no return shots. It's another condition where Aaron's d discussion about, you know, maybe having, um, maybe having a, a barrel roll to get behind the squad is a good thing uh, to do or not, but I really think that sometimes it's better to just buckle down and shoot. So here's Gurry. Predator re-rolling the one, spending focus for four hits on number four. Number four has to spend the focus token to live. Console fire on Thweek gets rolled, damage going through. It's Thweek taking the console fire damage. Which means that if we get to another turn, the console fire might kill Thweek. Right, but he didn't go anywhere. Which is he didn't awesome. go anywhere. Guri, Guri's one bank cleared the Y-Wing by a, by a Micron. Guri just took a range one on the shot at number four and put three uh, three damage through. Wow, it's sending up closer than we would have thought. Very close indeed. So number four has a range two right. on Thweek. Right. Uh, Thweek going to shoot range one at number three, who has one life left. Oh, he's got him. Yeah, because that would mean that uh, the only ship shooting at Thweek is number four, who now has no tokens. So, so double, crits. double crit, one predator. It's, not, it's, a, it's his borrowed Jess ability reroll. Oh, it's borrowed Jess ability reroll. And he's gone. He's still dead. Damaged engine. Super rough end, uh, ending there for Philip. Eh? He had a uh, great positioning. Um, yeah. This is why I would have liked that uh, that K turn from the from the stress bot, but uh, oh, crit, dodged all the all the natties. My goodness. All right, so Thweek is on one. They've got three minutes left to set up and go. I'm gonna tell them. So, folks, just to actually paint this game state properly. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and Aaron, you might have to back me up on this. I just want to paint this game state properly. Thweek has console fire with one hull left, which, and we've begun the last round of the game. So regardless, if we get to the combat phase and Thweek rolls his points and dies, Philip is then winning 64 to 50, yep. which means that Guri would have to kill the Y-Wing to win the game. So much will depend on that console fire roll in a second here, folks. Uh, I, I, I made sure to say that as quietly as possible yeah. so that our players didn't hear us over the room. But um, this is coming down to console fire, Caleb16. You are absolutely correct. Um, if Philip does the math, and this is a very tough thing to do math uh, when you're on the table because you don't have the point values up in front of you like we do. We get a little bit more perspective on the game state than they do, but uh, I'm uh, I'm actually like I'm, I'm I'm biting my nails with excitement here. This is uh, well. Here's the thing: that Z95 number four has to go for it. So Guri could risk a turn if the Y wing does indeed do a 4K, and Guri gets on the Y wing range one. She can pop it. Guri could also just three sloop left and. But it won't be a range one in that case. And she needs to get four damage on that board. Yeah, number four has got one health left, though. Yep. But you just said that she has to kill it. Guri has to kill Thweet. Guri has to kill Y if Thweet dies. Yeah. Guri has a target lock on number four. Okay. Because last turn she took a target lock and got her free token. Yeah. And then used Predator on it. So she could actually just three sloop left here and take a target lock shot on number four. And then, um, but, then but I don't. I don't think math. I don't think Mike has done the math. I mean, it's it's really tough to do the math in this case. So I think that um, he's probably thinking to himself, you know, what if I kill number four with Gurry and I keep Thweek alive, I win. Um, but as uh, Caleb sixteen from YouTube has commented, it is coming down to the console fire in a moment here, folks, and we are just salivating with anticipation at this point. Yep. So if if he doesn't die from the console fire and both of 
both Star Vipers get shots. Oh, okay. So going for a block with the damage Z? Yep. He's going to block the damage Z. He's also going to self block his own Y Wing. And then if Thweak moves any further, uh, the Y Wing is going to get to shoot as well. It's really great positioning with uh, with Phillips' card here. So far, if, if, if Thweak bumps, and nobody's got, nobody's got a shot. Time has been called. We are in the last round of play. And we are about to see some uh, some very definitive dice get rolled here in a minute there, Aaron. Indeed we will. Go. I will do it. You're not going to miss it? All right, bye. So a double stress week, turning away from the fight to try and dodge the Y-Wing's arc. I think I think Gurry probably did the uh, Gurry probably did the one turn right to try and finish off number four. He just rolled a dice. Yeah, I think he was rolling the console fire in advance just to be sure. He shouldn't do that, man. Not before he's positioned Gurry. He can't do that early, right? It's the wrong order. It gives him information for whatever Gurry is doing. So I don't know oh no no, he clipped the cloud. My mistake. Oh, okay. He clipped the cloud with his back left corner. That might be the. Uh, and it's the same. It is the sloop. Yeah. Okay. So he's still he's he's still gonna get a shot at number four, and all he has to do is push one damage through, and then Thweek is alive. This four won't get a shot. Good point. Okay. So this is very exciting. So here's the console fire. Here's the console fire. The console fire roll, folks, is drum roll. Oh, oh, he's alive. Holy crap. Unbelievable. Thweek squeaks out with his life. Thweek squeaks out. That's, that's the name of this tournament round. Oh, so dramatic. And all Gurry has to do is pop four. Does, hold on, does he see it? Does he see it? Oh, uh, he's, they're checking for focus tokens. So he's done there. Gurry's going to go with the shot modified only by Predator on number four. You totally called it. So. Taking a target lock. Predator, whatever you call it. Two hits. So If there's a blank. Oh, two blanks. The green dice have not been kind to Philip on this one. We're about to find out if uh, Philip's Y Wing has arc on Thweek. I think the answer is probably no, and that is the game, folks. Pretty much. I mean, there's like a one in a billion chance that six could take Curry, full health Curry off the board. Can't do it without that. Yeah. 